Hi, and welcome back to me talking about whatever I want. Today, I want to talk about how I was wrong and why I was wrong, and I want to apologize for being wrong. Just skipping all the pleasantries, I uploaded a video yesterday, um, and it's still on my channel. It's called Ma'am, You're 30. Great title, I know. And in this video, I had... I showed a lot of things and I said a lot of things that I honestly had no business saying or showing. I was getting not really a lot of backlash. Like, I don't want to sit here and blow it out of proportion and cry and say, oh my gosh, I was getting so many hate comments. I didn't see one hate comment. I only saw hundreds of comments uh, that were disappointed. Now, this happens to me a lot when I make videos that are like, I guess you could say against other creators. But then I wake up in the morning and the video has over like... A thousand comments. It became obvious to me that it would be disingenuous for me to just write it off as fans of the person I was talking about coming after me. It was very obviously my own viewers expressing their disappointment and how I handled the situation. So I'm still here. We can talk about it because honestly, if I can't sit here on my own channel and talk about myself and the wrong things that I did and why I think they're wrong, then I'm literally, I would have no self-awareness. I would be no different from the people I'm talking about. I feel like it would be too easy for me to just delete the video and then upload a two minute clip saying, guys, I'm sorry. That's not really addressing the problem head on. And plus to take that video down would be to remove like the hundreds of comments that were criticizing me. So I personally feel like that's the easy way out. So instead, let's just go through the very grimy business of me eating my own words. But one thing I have to get out of the way, just so we're on the same page, is that I'm not here to apologize for the whole video. Obviously, the video is 20 minutes long, so for me to sit here and say that every single thing I said within 20 minutes, I now, the next day, no longer agree with, would be disingenuous and obviously just a lie. Parts of the video, I was right, and I believe what I said, and I felt like it's still important that I said those things. Other parts of the video, I was just wrong, and I was sharing misinformation, and I was talking about things I didn't understand. And then other parts of the video, I was just out of line. I was just being mean. So I can go back and pretty easily identify which parts are which. Now that I have the added context of the comments I was getting yesterday, you know, basically correcting my mistakes. This is just a good old fashioned call out post because what she did was bad and she should feel bad. All right. So I'm still sticking with that. Lauren Petrie is the person I'm talking about. And honestly, there were some things that she did in the video that I'm reacting to that were completely unacceptable. And I kind of think if nobody calls them out, then that's problematic in and of itself. So, so far I'm kind of on board with myself. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip a couple minutes ahead because this part of the video is just me explaining the two people I'm talking about, which is Blake, a 16 year old Instagram person. They're non-binary, they go by they, them. This is what they look like. And Lauren Petrie. She runs a YouTube tattoo channel called Tree Gold Tats. And basically she made a video calling out uh, Blake for a myriad of things, some of which I agreed with and some of which I didn't agree with. So I'm basically just gonna skip the introductions because, well, I just gave them. Right off the bat, the thumbnail for this video was extremely concerning to me because it says, visibly self-tattooed before graduating school, mom can't tell they're real, unsanitary tattooing, like this reads like a tabloid article, okay? Blake's not a celebrity, they're just, a 15 year old kid. I still stand by this because what I go on to explain is that unsanitary tattoos are completely fine to call out, but kind of sensationalizing the fact that their mom doesn't know they're real and oh, they're visibly tattooed and they haven't even graduated high school. It's obviously capitalizing off of judging Blake for their decisions before the video even starts, which didn't sit right with me. And I still don't think that that's right. I'm doing this from a place of concern. I want to stress that to you so hard. I'm doing this from a place of concern. How much do you want to bet that's not coming from a place of concern? Okay, well, that was mistake number one. Just because Lauren makes mistakes in this video, which she does, and I do address them, that doesn't mean she's not coming from a place of concern. Doing that to her literally before she has a chance to get into the video was just completely wrong and setting up an atmosphere where she has no space to express those concerns. So I apologize for that. That wasn't right. I don't want any of you being horrible to this person at all. Cause again, they are young, they are a minor. So this is actually a new technique where instead of just saying, hey, 
don't send hate to this person. Lauren uh, says, don't send hate to this person, but then proceeds to do the hating herself. I have to give her points for innovation. I do still agree with that. While I appreciated her disclaimer, Lauren herself is the one being unacceptable towards Blake in the situation, which is ridiculous. But already, it just in this current video that you're watching, I'm being forced into a gray area where like I have to admit that while Lauren made mistakes in this video, that doesn't mean that she doesn't care about Blake at all. So I had a complete lack of nuance in my original video. It's obvious to me now. After reading the comments, kind of pointing out how unfair I was being, I get it. I did this one with like a regular needle, you know, like an embroidery needle base. An embroidery needle, an embroidery needle. A embroidery needle? An embroidery needle. An embroidery needle. An embroidery needle. Okay, we get it. You just learned how to edit. We also get it. Don't use embroidery needles when you're tattooing. I think it's perfectly valid to call that out because, yeah, that's pretty horrifying. I don't think you should be poking yourself with an embroidery needle in an attempt to do DIY tattoos. Okay, so I'm still with me on that. The embroidery needle editing was just very annoying but like i did in the segment i still pointed out that um lauren had a point i could still see past you know the parts of her video that were annoying to me and understand that there is still valid things in that video which i do go on to explain you can get tattoo needles on amazon for like seven dollars so please i beg of you get tattoo needles don't use sewing needles um I'll okay just because you can doesn't mean you should okay kids step away from your parents amazon account and do not be ordering tattoo needles once again i think lauren's exactly on the money i really am 100 percent for this video so far she said she's doing it out of a place of concern she told everybody not to send any hate to blake she's calling out specific issues that are wrong with the information blake is presenting literally nothing wrong with this video in fact i think it's very important that lauren made it so if only it was that simple. Again, I still stand by that. And I think an issue was because I only said this six minutes in and there's like a remaining 17 minutes in this video, um, that kind of got buried by all the other garbage I wound up saying later. But I would just like to, I guess, double down on the fact that I did think that Lauren's intentions were good, which obviously contradicts what I said earlier anyway. So I don't know how I made this video without understanding that I was contradicting myself, but I can really obviously see that now. The fact that they're tattooing on a carpet, a freaking carpet, is giving me pure fear. You know, repeating things doesn't make it funnier. And again, Lily Singh has gotten very far in her comedic career, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, these are all things that I'm sure Blake didn't know, or at least should have conveyed. Even I didn't know that you shouldn't be tattooing people on carpet, though it does make sense. I don't know anything about sanitary tattoo practices, and I did admit <laughs> that I did learn something from Lauren's video. Blake being a 16-year-old, showing people how to stab needles into themselves with ink literally is awful and i'm glad that an adult did go on the internet and call that out but just because lauren did that doesn't excuse what she proceeds to do in the next part of this video this is the part of the video where it takes a turn and instead of offering perfectly valid and necessary tattoo do's and don'ts and correcting misinformation lauren starts attacking not just blake but blake's family it's it's like really 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 weird i was honestly genuinely curious about this i was curious to see what they had to say when it comes to like their family and stuff with all their tattoos and piercings because i know for a fact that oh if i look like that <laughs> oh, my mum would have freaking kicked me off the planet but the thing is like you do look like that that's really confusing that you find an issue with it now obviously i do understand that she's saying if she looked like it when she was blake's age that would have been a little different but again that's such like a boomer mentality where it's like well my mom would have never let me do this yeah that's probably why you have thirty thousand tattoos on you now because your mom didn't let you do so much as put a sticker on when you were like 12. you know okay so that was just wrong <laughs> i just pulled that out of thin air you can't judge people's actions based off of their parents which is kind of literally what i was calling lauren out for so i was just being hypocritical there's like no way of circumventing that i was being hypocritical right here you know i think it's weird that she was so concerned about blake's family in the first place because like 
what does that have to do with anything? But I mean, that just borders on kind of weird territory, like things I wouldn't necessarily say, but I guess I can understand why Lauren's saying that. Now, I would like to at least emphasize that part of the video because I did feel like that got buried a bit. I do understand why Lauren went there and I wouldn't go there. You know what I mean? I don't think it's right to immediately want to Blake bring Blake's parents into it. Lauren did this because Blake is actually the one who mentioned their mom, but at the same time, I just didn't see how it was relevant. Their mother's not like an internet person. I don't think we even know who this person is or anything about them. So and then she just veers into absolutely unacceptable territory. I don't know why I did it. I don't remember doing it. I don't care. Like it's honestly like this whole thing concerns me so much because it's like, okay, but why can't you remember? Like you're so young. Do you see what I'm saying here? Like I'm scared that there's something else going on here. Like, you know, like with substances maybe. I don't know. I don't want to assume or anything like that. Yep, that's right. Full grown adult just went on the internet and accused a teenager of being on drugs. You know, you can't do that you just can't do that i don't really have to explain why you can't do that but i can only assume lauren doesn't understand why you can't do that first of all if you don't know then you can't say accusations as strong as substance abuse could ruin someone's life issues like that aren't dealt with by talking about it on the internet they're not dealt with by public speculation and people wondering about it and prying issues like substance abuse are dealt with privately by people within that person's life and the fact that we're having this conversation about substance abuse at all is weird because that's not something that blake ever mentioned so to put that on them is beyond unacceptable really for me as an adult to have to sit here and say to another adult hey you don't accuse people of being on drugs is ludicrous especially since i'm assuming that this lauren person is older than me. i still 100 percent agree with everything i said there um, just for full disclosure, actually, that's kind of the part of the video where I just stopped giving her room. You know, after she went on the internet and basically speculated about whether or not Blake is abusing substances, which is unacceptable, it was then that I decided there's no way Lauren was coming from a place of concern. But again, that's just flawed thinking. That's like black and white thinking. Even when I've talked about people on my channel before that have been open about, you know, substance abuse but even at that i just completely avoid talking about that you can't do it you know if you don't know you can't say and you can ruin someone's life by bringing those up so what i really should have done hitherto was kind of just focus on that that's the issue with this video my issue with lauren was that what kind of person doesn't see the issue with going on the internet and saying though their behavior is odd it makes me wonder if they're abusing substances. My mind doesn't immediately go to the worst. A lot of times, I just think kids embellish things. You know, they might say things like, ooh, I don't even remember getting this tattoo, but I like it, so I don't really care. To me, just based off the interactions I've had with people Blake's age, it doesn't really mean much to me, you know what I mean? So again, that statement is not enough to decide that Blake's on drugs. Uh, Lauren then goes on to judge Blake's mom. My mom just came in here and she was like, you need to wash all those tattoos off. Stop putting them on yourself. Cause she still thinks they're fake. Like I'm honestly so concerned that they are living under the roof with someone that cannot figure out that all of those tattoos are real or fake. This is like borderline stupidity. Okay, so first you're gonna go online and accuse somebody of substance abuse and then you're going to imply that their parents are stupid you know even if at the very least blake's mom was like in this video i could sort of bring myself to understand but she's not in the video with blake you can't talk about people that you have never seen and the bottom line is you never know what's going on in somebody's home you don't know why blake's mom hasn't done anything to stop them from getting tattoos you don't know if blake's mom has tried you don't know if their dad has tried you don't know anything like you really just don't the only thing you know is good tattoo practice you don't know anything about blake's life so all these speculations about you know ooh, substance abuse and their family life who are you? Like, are you literally a tabloid magazine? Because if so, I'll treat you with like the same respect I would treat the sun. <laughs> Nothing. You have no integrity. You're not worth listening to. You're not worth looking at. You're not worth paying attention to. Okay, so while I obviously came off a little strong towards the end of that, 
I'm not going to take back the underlying statement, which is that you don't know what Blake is going through. In Lauren's video, all I see is her, some paintings in the background, a couch. All I'm getting from Lauren's video is what Lauren's giving me. All you're getting from this video are the things that I'm saying and what's in the background. This is like a tiny window of a larger space that I'm in, both physically and mentally. So no matter what anybody says to me, I will never change my stance that that tiny space that people present on YouTube is not enough to make assumptions about their family members, this, that, the other. That's when you're getting into like tabloid territory. Like if you have to speculate on things that you can't really show happen. Like my video about Daniel Cohn, in my opinion, was a similar premise to her video about uh, Blake. In that video, I was going off of video evidence that I showed in the video of Danny's mom, you know, pressuring her into making out with her boyfriend or like pressuring her into showing off her bikini, even though she's only like 13. That's on camera. So I was well within my right to say, hey, this is happening. We don't have video evidence of Blake's mom, I guess, acting weird or exhibiting borderline stupidity, as Lauren put it. So bottom line is we don't know. That overnight where like, they're just living their best teen years. They're having fun, they're with their friends, going out, experimenting with style and what have you. And to make such a bold movement of having very visible hand tattoos at such a young age, I don't know. You have very visible hand to oh my god, where do I go from here? She even mentions that she herself has hand tattoos, so it's like, how are you not picking up the irony? In fact, this whole latter portion of the video is her just projecting she's projecting like her life depends on it she's all like blake's just living their best teen life having fun i couldn't help but pick up a twinge of jealousy i mean clearly this lauren person isn't a teenager anymore me neither it happens to all of us so me right here saying she's projecting i was actually referring to things that she proceeds to say about herself she actually starts lauren starts talking about herself and the tattoos that she regrets having and the excessive amount of money that she's had to spend to remove these tattoos. And I was saying that she was projecting because now she's talking about Blake the same way. But up until this point in the video, Lauren hadn't mentioned any of this, <laughs> at least in the video that I showed in my video. So it's like really poor presentation on my part. This whole conversation is counterproductive because obviously Blake has the tattoos on their hands. They're not going anywhere. They're there. So to kind of sit around and make it about the fact that Blake has the tattoos versus what you were doing initially, which was making it about safe practices, is just weird and makes you sound like a lot of things. The tattoos are in Blake's hand. Now, obviously me saying that, I guess I was kind of giving off the impression that I was okay with it or that I didn't see anything wrong with it, but that's not what I meant. And that's also not true. But if I didn't specify, how could you know? What I really meant was that nothing was being accomplished by sitting around talking about it. You know what I mean? But at the point where you start singling out Blake and making it about Blake, as opposed to about the misinformation or the damage that Blake could be causing, then I'm absolutely going to have a problem with the video. You know what I mean? The tattoos are there. What are you gaining now? One major thing I did pick up from the comments was why it's such a big deal that Blake got tattoos, you know, on their hands above the collar and below the cuff, I think is what people in the comments were saying. We're basically tattoo etiquette is that a tattoo artist will not tattoo you, you know, above your collar or below your cuff. In other words, places that would be visible while fully clothed, unless you're like older or you already have a ton of tattoos or like maybe you have some sort of job that doesn't involve having to cover up tattoos. And so like the glaring issue here is that Blake has pretty much robbed themselves of the safety net that that etiquette provides. If Lauren had explained about, you know, the above the collar, below the cuff policy, then I would kind of understand. Just like I did when I read the comments, I'm like, oh, so that's why it's a big deal. But all I was seeing was some lady with hand tattoos calling out some kid with hand tattoos. To me, that just was reading as hypocrisy. But no, really, it's about tattoo etiquette. I just, I wish that the tattoo etiquette had been better explained. But at the same time, I could have looked that up myself. So I was wrong in that regard. And I just have this image of them just in their like mid tw mid to late 20s of being like holy crap what did i do okay at this point you can basically tell she's just talking about herself but like substituting blake <laughs> it's a little eerie like uh i think 
you're in your mid to late 20s and you're the probably the one thinking holy crap what did you do i guess i'll just say what i said about blake you have the tattoos they're there now um talking about some random kid on the internet it's not going to do anything about it like i've been in that place i've been in blake's place i've spent thousands literally thousands of pounds on cover-ups yep it, it's projection time strapping kids where she's projecting a movie her whole life story apparently you know the fact that you had to spend thousands of dollars of your own money to undo thousands of dollars of your own money's worth of work is on you like is it blake's fault that you look like a coloring book and you regretted it I don't think so. And you know, I was wondering what it was that I was picking up in this video that was bothering me so much. I was like, is it jealousy? No. Is it condescension? No, not really. Now it's just all too obvious that I'm rewatching it. It's bitterness. Well, I'm not gonna apologize for saying she looks like a coloring book because that would be dishonest. I thought that was funny. And that of course is just a joke. She doesn't really look like a coloring book. But the way I just immediately went to projection, again, to assume that she's just projecting would be to assume that she's not coming from a place of concern, which as I established earlier, isn't right. You may think this is a good thing now, and you may think you're like the coolest person, but I, I, get, I can I literally guarantee you when you hit your 20s, you're gonna be like, what did I do? Okay, if she mentions <laughs> being in your 20s one more time. And again, like by the time they're in their mid 20s, you're looking at like 10 years down the line so in 10 years time so things may have changed and hopefully for them it does oh my gosh we get it you're in your mid to late 20s and when you say hopefully things work out did you mean they didn't work out for you because that's that's the only thing i'm picking up from this video like truly what is being gained from this maybe they'll watch this and be like oh my god this girl like why are you so judgmental like let me live my life but i've been there like I was saying, I've spent thousands of pounds on cover-ups of tattoos that weren't done very well. I don't think anybody's going to be like, oh my gosh, why is this girl so judgmental? I think we're going to be like, oh my gosh, why is this grown woman accusing a teenager of substance abuse, speculating on her family members and her home life, projecting her own regrettable life choices onto this child, and then trying to mask it all as sympathy over bad tattoo practices. Really, it was just an extremely pathetic video to upload and I'm sad that I watched it. <laughs> um, sad that it has any amount of views at all. All right, so honestly, I still agree with that. I was very harsh in my wording, but I can't sit here and say, you know, I can't take it back if I still believe it. Lauren's video was not a good video. Now, obviously, as I hope I've explained, it wasn't a bad video for the reasons that I was saying. It wasn't a bad video because she was projecting. It wasn't a bad video because she wasn't coming from a place of concern. Because again, I don't have any way of knowing that. I mean, obviously, I do. we do understand that Lauren was using her own life experiences to explain why what Blake did was wrong. And ultimately, whether that's okay to do or not will be up to the individual person. I just don't think it is because at this point we are getting into judgment. So I think I'm gonna skip ahead a few minutes because the next part of the video were basically just me reading comments on Lauren's video. Lauren's reactions to these comments were like super childish. Um, and then I was repeatedly bringing up like, how she was basically acting like a child. Like, for example, people were bringing up legitimate concerns about, you know, the fact that she was speculating on Blake's substance abuse and family life. And then Lauren was replying things like, I just really care about, you know, substance and infections. Basically, her reaction to the comments was wrong. And that's because she was being obtuse, which I think I even said in this video. She was ignoring the glaring issues with her video. But the one comment that I do want to address was towards the end. What exactly did you accomplish with this video besides revealing that the 15 year old you're discussing is twice as mature as you'll ever be? The way you're masking toxicity as concern makes my skin crawl. Congrats on 100k. You deserve precisely zero. I just went straight to the point. And so, um, go ahead and guess what Lauren's response to me was. Let's get a little drum roll. Okay, hon. Just delete your channel. Just, just, just delete your channel. First of all, my comment was out of line. Uh, to imply that, or not to imply, I just said it. To say that somebody doesn't deserve their subscribers for the channel that they've uploaded tons of videos to and have run for maybe years, I don't know, is just wrong. That would be the same as if someone said, I don't deserve subscribers because of the ugly video I made yesterday. I think I would be very upset if someone said that to me. So her response of, okay, hon was perfectly fine. If I could go back and 
I guess, take back my comment on her video, I would more so put, hey, the fact that you're doing things as unacceptable as speculating on a teenager's drug use and making assumptions about their parents really calls into question the fact that you care about them or that you're expressing your video from a place of concern. In fact, all it's really doing is concerning me <laughs> that someone 30 years old is going after someone 16 years old in a way that is universally understood to be unacceptable. Do you have anything to say to that? That's honestly what I would comment word for word because while that's still pretty harsh, that's what I believe. So the last part of the video, I'm not really gonna go over too much because I'm just basically doubling down on the fact that Lauren is 30. And I even make the joke that I'm gonna name the video she's 30 because that's all I could really take away from it. Lauren might be 30 and an adult and responsible for her actions, um, but I'm 21. So I'm responsible for what I said in that video. A lot of things I said in that video were wrong. I'm gonna give this video some kind of clickbait title so hopefully a lot of people watch it. Um, also, I'm gonna put ads in the video just because as serious as it was, we're not talking about like, I don't know, no one died. <laughs> Bottom line, it's not the most serious thing in the world, but it's still serious enough to where I felt compelled to address it. So just ultimately, with no strings attached, Lauren and all the people in the comment section who felt like I was talking to them, um, I'm sorry. I hope you forgive me. Um, I'll have better videos tomorrow. You know what I mean? They can't all be bangers, but that's all I really have to say. Thank you.